Hello, Diagon Alley Book Nook fans. I haven't forgotten about you. This is a uh, scrapping posh with an ASC design team project. And we've got one building to go, so let's get her done and then do the final touches. Now, having said that, I did print some stock photos from online just googled them I have a couple libraries this is actually a picture of the cauldron from the leaky cauldron in Universal library library like some little magical library swoop swirls um, a couple of pictures from Ollivanders. I have a picture of an attic and a bed. Um, <clears throat> I have some little books here and some newspapers, but I don't know that I'm going to use those this time. I have two pictures of my daughters and my daughter in um, Universal Florian Fortescue and with her new one. Uh, there's the inside of Florian Fortescue's and then the bedroom image and the attic image just a different size so these are the things that I'm going to put inside the buildings or behind the windows just get some stock photos estimate what size um, and then I may cut out a couple of these and put them in the windows of uh, Flourish of Blots let's just see what happens we'll see what happens so let's get to our cut aparts. Now, before we do flourish and blots, we have to do the front because this template, which I have a new one cut, but you can see uh, you use it for painting on flourish and blots, but before I do that, I want to use it for a template on the very front cover. So if I could find that template we could start addressing that. So what you need is a piece of styrofoam board and peel off the paper both sides. Same as what we did on Ollivanders. And then I'm just going to cut an approximate size and try and cut it. approximately straight. Okay. And that's trash. Okay, apparently I'm not going to find my... Oh, there it is. There's my new templates with all the extra stuff that we need. Okay. So, what I don't need is everything else right now. Okay, so the bottom is flat and kind of cut off, and you don't need to use these templates, remember, you can just make bricks, they're just lines, right? Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and trace the outside of this template, and it is a tiny bit bigger. Than what we need because you don't want to see the background and then I made it the edges some of the edges jagged so that it looks like the brick entering Diagon Alley from the leaky cauldron and the same with the insides kind of jagged So what you can do if you don't want to do the templates, of course you can make your own template, 
if you want. But the other thing you could do is just take your front, the front of your book nook with the hole in it and kind of trace it out. You don't even have to make it jagged. I just thought it was just a little extra. And this is one of those things that you'd rather it be just a little too big than too small. You can always cut off. It's not so easy to add on. get the bricks painted all different colors you get the wash out again which is the same wash we used on Ollivander's it's water um, some fluid rinse aid for the dishwasher and you can use acrylic ink or I use some um, distress ink Tim Holtz and then you put it on there and we're just going to wash out all those really bright colors and kind of make it a little more cohesive and look like brick just like we done on Ollivander's and you have to let this dry really good before your dry brush. Okay, so you can leave it dark like this, 
or if maybe you want to pick up a little bit of paint or a little bit of the darkness, just dab it. I think I want mine just a little darker. And you let this dry completely and you give it a good dry brush with a white or a cream color just to make that stand up. There you go. Okay, so the last stage of this cover piece here is the um, adding some dry brushed lighter colors and I'm using um, I am using a white. Okay, I'm just going to use white. Whoa, and that was way too much. All right, that's okay. So you just take a larger brush. I like using a larger brush. And you wipe off almost all your paint. And then that's not enough. You go back through and it gives the wash a kind of brings out some of the details that you may have lost uh, the texture. Well, that is too white and the other is not white enough. The good thing about doing diagonally is it doesn't have to be perfect by any means. I may go back through where I added too much here and maybe add some moss or something. And now we can move on to Florian's and then, or not Florian's, uh, Flourish and Blots. And then we get to finish decorating everything else and putting it all together and adding the lights. So, so um, I'll link in the description below the lights that I'm using. But either one will work. It's just you have to, you'll have excess with the fairy lights because, you know, they're every three or six inches and sometimes you don't need every six inches uh, but if you can make it work then you know that's cool too the other thing is is that on diagonal I ended up with three battery packs and or the first diagonal that I did I ended up with three battery packs and I'm gonna try and limit it to one or two so we'll see how that works all right so next step floor some blots Okay, so I got a little bit of time here before I have to go to work. So I wanted to show you I added some moss and all I did was put, I painted a little bit of green which gave the, the same effect. But for texture I used some like just moss that you buy from like the craft store. I just glued and then pushed it on there. So that's going to be the front. So put that with our finished buildings and now let's finish our last building. You're going to need the brick template again. If you don't have the brick template from my store then you can just um, use a stencil or whatever you have. My texture paste or this is modeling paste but you can use modeling paste, texture plate paste, plaster, whatever you got. That just gives a little obviously texture 
but I have only used it once and I noticed that it got really hard so I'm gonna see if I can use this if not um, I have a second container but I um, I recommend maybe putting a lid on it or um, it had a lid on it um, like shoving saran wrap or something down in there so that it doesn't turn um, this is way rub more rubbery than I want it to be so I'm gonna try it but I don't know so I just have I have a spatula you can use your finger which is probably what I'll end up doing um let's get a piece of plastic and this is just packaging from paper and we're going to focus on this side is going to be up against the front of the box so I'm not really going to focus on that but if I got some over spray or whatever that's fine this uh, uh, the top you won't see and this side if you see it is going to be in the mirror but that's okay so um, you can do a couple different things. You can use the template as it is and move it around. You can cut off the long parts and just use the long parts going this way. Uh, but it's not it's not a full template. But I'm not going to want to make the full thing. I'm not texturing the full thing. I just want to like pick up on some bricks. So um, I think the main thing is is to make sure it's straight <laughs> so that you don't have crooked crooked yeah crooked bricks and then I'm just going to and this will work just like any stencil and like I said if you have a stencil then use that use whatever kind of texture you want I have some I, I messed up here I got some on there you can actually take the stencil, lay it back over, line it up, and just push back down on those if you want. Okay, so that's the bad part about having not having a full stencil, but that's okay. I'm going to try and stay <clears throat> away from the windows a bit because I have to glue those on. And I don't want to. I don't want to have to glue onto a whole bunch of texture. Okay. And then I messed this up here. I'm just gonna scrape it off. If there's extra non-brick texture on there, not gonna hurt anything. We are just adding interest. Because remember, I don't know how many times I've said this, and my apologies if I'm being repetitive, but the main thing with these, with because you have the lights in there, is adding that texture so that the light reflects off of uh, surfaces. Let's do a big long one here. We're going to overlap some of the other bricks, which is fine. I wanted to do this early today so that possibly later when I get home from work, nine hours from now, I can uh, work on it. It'll be dry. Okay. There we go. Um, maybe this is like a huge window. I'm thinking maybe a couple bricks here. And you don't have to fill the bricks. You know, you don't have to have them like all filled in like, like I said, just a hint of bricks. I don't want like huge dollops like hanging up. I'm just going to do a like a brick here, a brick here, even though I said I didn't want them next to the windows. 
I feel like it needed it. A couple bricks. Oh. I tell you I was no expert with stencils. Oh, I'm not. Okay. So that screwed up, but that's okay. Okay. That stencil has outlived its usefulness and I don't need it anymore. So now, um, along with the bricks, I'm just going to add like a squish of, um, this like, um, kind of like when a building is in disrepair and it loses like a part of its uh, wall or outside covering, like a stucco or something. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. So I'm just going to make a squoosh and a swoosh. And maybe one up here. And you can even go over some of those bricks. There. And then when we paint that, we go over some of these bricks, some of those, and some of these. That looks like, okay, that looks like a major repair. Okay, so that we let dry. I'm going to put some saran wrap in my modeling paste to hopefully it doesn't get any less, um, I don't know, useful. All right, so there's that, and we're gonna let it dry. Oh, maybe you guys can't see it. You see the texture on there? You'll see it more once we paint it. Okay, so that took me forever. I was looking for, I have specifically bought these Flat nose jewelry pliers to see if it would help me fold my paper because the cardstock is thin or thick and some of the lines are very thin. So if you take this thing and you put it right up against your perforated line or your bend line and you fold it over does it help? let's see ah uh, yeah I think that I think that worked pretty well you can flatten it here maybe okay they're a little dirty I put oil on them so they wouldn't rust. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it didn't work great, but it didn't work bad. I'm going to say that's, that's a little better than trying to do it by hand. It's just there's such a small space here. Okay, so, it, yeah, it works better if you... Yeah, that worked great. Uh, there's a bigger, I want to say, line there. So if you do here, and this one doesn't quite reach, but it's very close to get you some nice crisp folds. I like it. Okay, yeah, so that worked well. All right, back to doing what we were doing. <clears throat> I'm almost out of glue, but I have a refill, so we're good. This is a balcony.
Sure, thank you. things are dry now so let's see what we can do um, let's paint some stuff uh, first let's see how this did looks pretty good it's a little lumpy uh, you can always sand a little bit if you have too much texture as far as what you want for the brick here if I can bend on these full lines. Yeah. Okay, so that's good. We achieve the 3D effect. Um, I think because this is such a big piece, uh, I may brace it somewhere. But not sure to, if I should do that now. Or after I get done painting it and stuff. Let's paint. 
some windows. I think what we'll do, look, there's dogs huffing and puffing in here. I'm just going to take everything and put it inside. This is my messy paint cloth for right now. And we'll put this over here and get the painting. Uh, I think we're going to do a little different than I did in my first one. A blue building with purple bricks. No. Blue building with green br bricks with purple like windows and window seals. And then on the leaky cauldron side we're going to do black. Well, no, let's do wood. We'll do some wood. But the floors and blots we're going to do in purple. So, get this painted up. And I have to layer these on top after they're, everything's painted and dried. So we have this painted solid and parts of it are dry and parts of it aren't. But what we're going to do is we're just going to add some highlights to the bricks. Now you can paint everyone individually. You can paint them different colors. I'm just going to 
highlight some of them and they don't have to be all that neat because you're not going to see each individual brick. You're just going to see a highlighted uh, version of it. And because the lighting is like different colors, there's that orange flickery, flickery light or a bright blue light, it's not going to come across as this really stand out-ish color. And if it did, that would be fine too. So I'm going to color each brick in individually. Um, then I'm going to, in these big smears, I'm going to put some green and then some cream too, just to make it look like some of the building finish has chipped away. Uh, and then I'm going to distress it and then we can glue on the windows and doors and stuff. Um, the other way you could do this, and I almost prefer it's the way that I did it last time, is I painted everything first. Painted the entire thing first and then I uh, colored my modeling paste and uh, did it that way. That would take a lot less... Uh, painting individual bricks I think so that's what I'll be doing here for a while getting really close to being done so okay we switched again um, let's put together the sign hasn't been, I don't know, it's probably been about a half hour or so, so hopefully these are dry enough. And I have to, I'm not sure that I'm going to put these end pieces on just because I don't know how it's going to look, so... before we get to glue on the doors and windows because the building is fairly wet after all that paint.
we have our building all dry. I'm going to go ahead and put the door. The door fits like exactly, so I'm just going to tape it on there. cardstock over that I think too. So I want to just make some like stiffeners because this is such a big building. Um, so you won't see these. Okay I have some scrap paper over here and I want to cover some of um, one I want to cover up that doorway to make sure it doesn't fall off because the washi tape isn't the best adhesive and who had a gap in the top of this doorway that I don't want there. That's it. Okay. Well, that little bit of glue is dry. I'm going to dry brush this and we're going to say goodbye for this week. And then I have a haul video coming from ASC. And then next week, we will finish this up. Oh, we're just going to put everything together. I'm going to do the lights again. If you want to do the lights like I do the lights, I will link the stuff in the description below. supplies on Etsy. Get all your paper crafting and multimedia needs. Multimedia? Yeah. And check out my other videos. Follow along with the progress. Uh, I'll be doing some more book nooks. And I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. If you head on over to ASC Supplies, use Scrapping Posh 10 for 10% off your regular price items. Everybody, please like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.